Thank you for nice introduction. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to thank organizers for inviting me to this nice symposium. Uh, I will talk about uh, design and synthesis of, uh, and uh, especially investigation of RL derivatives of haloptide as potential transdermal enhancers. You see that uh, I am from faculty of pharmacy, uh, special university of veterinary. Uh, this is uh, Czech Republic, former Czechoslovakia. Uh, this now this is small state in the central Europe. Capital is Prague, and my university is located in Brno. Uh, Brno is uh, 20 kilometers from Prague, and this is uh, the second largest city in uh, Czech Republic, uh, near about 70 kilometers from Vienna and 60 kilometers from Bratislava. Uh, Brno is uh, capital of historic, uh, historic uh, country, Moravia. Uh, Brno is a historical uh, town. It was established during the 10th century. And there was very nice uh, historic uh, center. There are many uh, churches. For example, here you can see Gothic Bishop's Cathedral. And also there is uh, uh, King Castle, uh, Romanesk and Gothic. And during Baroque epoch was uh, rebuilt uh, to a huge Baroque fortress. Uh, here you can see campus of my university. It looks like park and is situated about uh, 10 minutes uh, from the city center. And the Department of Chemical Drugs is situated in this building. Uh, I will talk very briefly about transdermal administration, about structure of skin and uh, transport through skin, and uh, detail in uh, about chemical penetration, respectively permeation enhancers and alaptide. Here you can see a structure of alaptide. This is uh, original Czech uh, molecule uh, that was developed in uh, uh, the 80s uh, in Prague, and you see that this is cyclic dipeptide. Why transdermal administration? Uh, here uh, you can see some advantages of transdermal administration and we can uh, say that uh, this in include especially good pharmacokinetic properties. Uh, ability to maintain long lasting steady state plasma concentration. Uh, we can reduce undesirable side effects. We can protect uh, drug uh, from first pass effect and uh, from interactions with uh, other applied drugs or food. Uh, we can apply drugs with neurotherapeutic window and we can say that uh, transdermal administration is very simple and painless application and this is non-invasive alternative to parenteral subcutaneous and uh, intramuscular injections. On the other hand, I must say about some disadvantages of transdermal administration, and it includes especially variable intra and inter individual absorption uh, that depends on the skin conditions and on the place of application, and longer time of effect onset that is connected with uh, need to overcome the skin barrier. Uh, you see the transdermal administration or transdermal therapeutic systems are not new. Uh, first, transdermal system was approved by FDA for scopolamine in 1979. And here you can see uh, the most popular molecules for transdermal systems. You see that this is popular for sex hormones, nicotine, uh, for some uh, uh, cardiovascular drugs, for antipsychotic drugs, and also for uh, the uh, analogs of uh, morphine. Uh, number of drugs that can be applied by uh, transdermal uh, systems are uh, limited, especially by uh, properties of drugs. Uh, ideal properties include solubility, penetrability, permeation, and resorption in blood. Uh, in this slide, uh, you see uh, requirements to the drug. Uh, these requirements include especially drug dosage. 
it should be uh, less than 25 uh, milligram per day. Biological half-life should be uh, two, 10 hours. Molecular weight under 500. And lipophilicity expressed as log P about 2.5. And crucial is the fact that the drug should not cause any skin irritation or immunity reaction. And we can say that about 5% of drugs uh, meet uh, the, uh, this uh, criteria. Skin is uh, physiologically and anatomically specialized by barrier, and we can say that this is the largest organ uh, in the human body and contains about 72% of water. This is very important for uh, permeation. Uh, uh, the most important function of skin is protection from water loss and mechanical chemical uh, impact. Uh, skin consists of uh, three layers, hypodermis, dermis, and epidermis. Epidermis is uh, the upper layer and uh, is impermeable to water and uh, chemically inert. And uh, this is the primary barrier against uh, damage. Uh, epidermis consists of four layers. Stratum basale, stratum spinosum, stratum granulosum, and stratum corneum. For us, is the most important stratum corneum. Uh, this is the final product of differentiation of epidermal cells. And this is outermost layer of skin that, uh, that is responsible for barrier function is formed from about 20 cell layers. And uh, these layers, or uh, between these layers, we can found intercellular matrix. And this matrix consists of specific lipids, such as ceramide, cholesterol, cholesterol esters, and so on. And the structure of stratum corneum uh, is like brick and mortar. Bricks are corneocytes, and mortar is the matrix. Here you can see uh, the structure of stratum corneum, and uh, we can distinguish three different uh, permeation layers. The first, this is transcellular way through cell bodies. The second is intercellular way uh, through matrix. But uh, mostly drugs uh, permeate uh, through cells and also uh, through matrix, and therefore we can talk about transepidermal way. The third is uh, permeation through accessory skin organs, such as uh, follicles, sweet glands, water pores, and so on. And uh, uh, this, the third way, is very important for permeation of nanoparticles. For example, when you have uh, nanoparticles in some cremes, uh, some gels, and so on, for topical application, uh, nanoparticles permeate through this uh, skin, accessories, organs. You see that, uh, that uh, permeation through uh, stratum corneum is limiting, and therefore many approaches uh, were developed uh, for overcoming this barrier. These approaches can be classified as chemical or physical. Physical, it means application nanoparticles or uh, using physical enhancement techniques. And chemical means a preparation of uh, lipophilic products or uh, using a chemical permeation enhancers. Other classification uh, can be based on optimization of drug vehicle or modification of stratum corneum. Optimization of drug vehicle consists in uh, application of uh, products, various eutectic systems, complexes uh, with cyclodextrin, preparation of liposomes, nanoparticles, saturated or satu supersaturated solutions, and uh, modification stratum corneum, it means uh, it's uh, hydration or lipid fluidization or disrupting, it means application chemical enhancers, optimization of formulation using non-hydrophobic excipients, or application physical techniques such as 
uh, iontophoresis, sonophoresis, and so on. I will talk about uh, chemical permeation enhancers. We can say that this is compounds such as excipients that specifically affecting intracellular space between corneal sites or modifying corneal sites by hydratation or denaturation. Here you can see 10 different classes of, uh, en of chemical enhancers and you see that this is relatively heterogeneous uh, uh, family. Therefore, we can say that the exact mechanism has not been elucidated. But uh, we can say that uh, uh, enhancers uh, exhibit multiple effects. It means they can interact with matrix, interact with proteins, and promote partitioning of drugs. Enhancers. Ideal enhancer should be non-toxic, non-irritant, uh, possess rapid onset infection, be pharmacologically, chemically inert, be compatible with drugs and other excipients, be cosmetically acceptable. Uh, its synthesis must be inexpensive and uncomplicated, and uh, it's ideal when the, uh, enhan when the enhancer uh, is uh, biodegradable. Uh, testing of these enhancers uh, is performed using Franz diffusion cells. Here you can see in the picture. Uh, here is place for skin. Uh, application of human skin is the best, but, uh, but uh, there are some ethic uh, problems. Therefore, uh, we uh, can use, uh, or we must use uh, skin from animals from snake, hairless mice, or with pig. Pig is the best because, uh, because uh, uh, skin from pigs is uh, uh, the most closest uh, with uh, ma uh, human. And uh, theophylline uh, is the most <coughs> frequent model drug. But uh, in the literature, we can found also hydrocortisone, indomethacin, there is antipsychotics, and so on. And uh, samples, uh, are analyzed by HPLC. We used uh, Franz diffusion cells. Uh, comp uh, receptor compartment was filled with phosphate buffer. Donor samples were prepared by dissolving tested enhancer and theophylline or drug in a medium. Samples were withdrawn uh, at uh, defined time intervals and uh, uh, we performed five determinations, and we use uh, and we use uh, skin from two animals. And uh, uh, analysis of uh, samples uh, was performed at, uh, using uh, Agilent uh, HPLC. Uh, we uh, uh, from the bay uh, from the uh, uh, obtained data, we calculated uh, cumulative amounts, steady state fluxes, and enhancement ratios. And now, why alaptide? Here you see the structure. And uh, uh, we can say that, th that uh, this is uh, spirocyclic cyclodipeptide, was synthesized during the 80s uh, in the Research Institute for Pharmacy and Biochemistry in uh, Prague, in the uh, uh, Czech Republic. And uh, this type of compound was designed as analog of melanocyte stimulating hormone release inhibiting factor. Uh, during a uh, number of uh, biological tests uh, showed significant curative effect, and uh, which is important, demonstrated very, very low acute toxicity and practically no other toxicities, subchronic, chronic, genotoxic, teratogenetic, no. Uh, you see that this is uh, chiral molecules, uh, one center of chirality, uh, two enantiomers. Uh, we uh, tested both enantiomers and uh, we found that uh, enantiomers don't induce biotransformation enzymes. Uh, that is also very 
important. Uh, Alaptid uh, reduced uh, gastric ulcers, increased cell proliferation, and regenerated skin injuries in pigs, and also injuries in rats. Uh, exact mechanism of action is not known, but is under investigation. And uh, why uh, we decided uh, to test Alaptid as uh, enhancer? Uh, from literature, uh, we found that uh, in uh, highly differentiated platinum keratinocytes, we can found a compound or, or a factor uh, that is named such as natural moisturizing factor. This uh, natural moisturizing factor is uh, composed of many, many compounds such as urea, proline, glutamine, uracanic acid, and so on. And uh, these, all these compounds are hygroscopic compounds that help to maintain skin hydration. You see that this is also very uh, different compounds, but we can find their characteristic fragments of heteroatoms. And this characteristic fragments of heteroatoms can be found also in many very active transdermal enhancer, such as here. And therefore, based on uh, this knowledge and based on the structure similarity, we decided to evaluate alaptide as potential transdermal enhancer. Uh, we investigate alaptide uh, with many, many drugs from many uh, different classes, and uh, we found that this is absolutely excellent enhancer. Uh, you see number of patents, and uh, uh, it's uh, very good that alaptide is uh, non-toxic and non-irritant. Therefore, uh, we decided to uh, pre uh, prepare other derivatives of alaptide and test them. Here you can see the synthesis of new compounds. Uh, this is multiple step synthesis. Um, the standing materials are amino acids. Uh, we must, uh, we must uh, block uh, the uh, functional groups. Uh, this is not uh, easy synthesis, but uh, we developed this synthesis uh, such that when we use chiral stunting materials, we obtained uh, product in 99 uh, enantiomeric uh, exceed. Uh, I will talk about uh, enhancement effect of these eight uh, compounds. Uh, you see that here uh, maybe phenyl, benzyl, naphthyl, substituted benzyl, or imidazolil, or uh, indolil. And here is enhancement ratio for theophylline for 24 hours. You see that phenyl derivatives is absolutely the best. Then uh, for substituted benzyl derivatives, uh, the worst was naphthyl derivative. Uh, uh, we can say that uh, uh, probably this is very uh, bulky substituent and the uh, solubility of uh, this compound was very, very low. Here you can see graph with uh, enhancement activity, comparison of permeation of theophylline uh, through system propylenglycol water without and with our compounds. Uh, the penetration uh, amount is uh, expressed in percentage. It means uh, in donor well, in donor cell is 100% uh, percent of theophylline, and this is a uh, percentage of uh, penetrated theophylline uh, that we found in the acceptor cell. You see that at uh, six hours, the uh, permeated percentage of uh, theophylline was only about 3%. But with application of uh, our compound, it was 
35% with phenyl, uh, with uh, benzyl about 30, and so on. Uh, based on this experiment, we performed other experiments. Here we used indomethacin and the carbomer gel. And uh, we used also 0.1% uh, of our uh, enhancers, uh, only, only enhancers with uh, activity. Here is permeation of indomethacin alone. Here is permeation of indomethacin with for, uh, formulated with our compounds. You see that phenyl derivative is absolutely the best than uh, then, uh, then, uh, for fluorobenzyl, for hydroxybenzyl, and so on. Yeah. Uh, then uh, we uh, formulated ibuprofen with carbomergel and also with hydrocrem. We used uh, commercial uh, ointment, uh, neoaquasort, and we used only phenyl and four fluor fluorobenzyl derivatives. You see again excellent permeation. Uh, logically, from uh, hydrocrem as uh, more lipophilic ointment, uh, the permeation is uh, less than from hydro, uh, from carbomer gel. And last slide. Uh, we uh, wanted to simulate transdermal therapeutic system. Therefore, we use 70 percent dimeticon and we use sumatriptan and 1% of our the best enhancers. Uh, at 30 minutes, you see permeation of sumatriptan alone about half percent, permeation of sumatriptan with our compounds about 5%. Uh, this is, I think, very, very uh, good activity, uh, especially very fast uh, onset uh, of the compounds. Therefore, uh, we can conclude that we prepared series of uh, new compounds. All we tested for their permeation enhancement effect. And uh, some of them showed very strong activity. Also, uh, all compounds expressed no skin irritability and we tested them for toxicity and not uh, again uh, cancer uh, cells, but also again human foreskin fibroblast. And uh, we found no in vitro toxicity up to concentration 50 micromole per liter. Therefore, uh, we can uh, summarize, I can summarize that uh, these compounds are a potential for other development. Uh, I would like uh, to thank uh, the technology agency of the Czech Republic for financial support. And last but not least, thank you for your kind attention.